Hey everybody, Professor Steins here, and today I'm going to do a little bit about uh, how to make an iframe responsive. Um, somebody in class kind of brought up that they were trying to make a YouTube video kind of fit into their responsive design, and uh, since a YouTube uses iframes, um, it's a little bit difficult. YouTube gives you an embed code when you go to their website, uh, when you're kind of looking at a, a specific video. So if I kind of look at uh, hopefully something that's not too bad, but if I look at the share button, this is kind of the embed code they give you, and it has a certain width and height of associated with it. Uh, so this is the iframe from one of my own videos, and it's a width of 420 and a height of 315. So it looks pretty decent when it's about this size. As you can see, I kind of got some uh, responsiveness going on already, where the the nav menu kind of folds up into the top. So, but the downside is you can kind of see the video ends up getting bigger uh, than the container at some point. That's because we're kind of hard coding a width in here. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to make it a little bit responsive and um, kind of explain it a little bit. The, the concept is is that I want this iframe to kind of be the same width as the parent container. So. Um, actually, technically, if I'm kind of looking at it like this, I kind of want it to be this whole screen width here. So, to, in order to kind of do that, I'm going to kind of take off these guys and add an ID value to it, call it YouTube. That way I can kind of attack it in my CSS document. Uh, so, this is my CSS. It's real simple right now. And what I could do is, um, I'm just going to move these real, right here real quick, show off is that uh, this line right here basically is the same as having the height and width directly on the tag, except it's kind of in my CSS document. Uh, so it's essentially it looks the same. So it doesn't, you know, it's still going to have that behavior of kind of being over the size of the width over here. So uh, that's kind of why I wrote the second rule. So this is the second rule where I'm not specifying a height and I'm only specifying a width of 100%. That way, the iframe is always the width of the parent container. And so what I mean by that is that uh, if I'm looking at it, this iframe is always going to be as big as the, the main section that I have defined. Of course, I have some, some margin and padding over here. So let's see. Nav section, uh, it's main. The iframe is as big as the main section. And then the wrappers kind of got what's got some padding over there on the, the left and right. So uh, the downside though is that iframe doesn't know how big the content inside of it is. So yes, it's true that it's a width of 100% and it's matching the parent container, but the iframe doesn't really know how how tall it needs to make itself. So it's kind of got just like a little bit of a default height going on here. And I kind of look through the CSS properties, um, and there's nothing really setting the height. So what we have to do is we kind of have to make a height for it, and that's kind of the whole plan. So in order to do that, I'm going to make a site.js file. And code at the bottom is kind of where I've already solved it once, but I'm going to kind of rewrite it from scratch just so that uh, kind of show off a little bit of jQuery. So I'm going to start by uh, doing document.ready and executing my function. And I'm just going to make sure that everything is working good and just throw out a hello make sure everything is good so that's good uh, what I want to do is I want to make sure I want to kind of see what the width is there so that's kind of where the yeah, I'm gonna make a variable called W and I'm gonna find uh, that YouTube container and I'm gonna find the inner width of it Oops, capital W inner width and I'm gonna alert uh, that W value back out so that we can see it. Well, I don't know. There we go. So the inner width is 749. That's kind of one of it's at this size. If I kind of shrink it down a little bit and refresh, the inner width is 499. And so you can kind of see I get a value for what W is. Uh, the, the width of it is 348. So technically I have three values right now. The three values I have are 
the original YouTube uh, length and width, which is kind of based on a ratio that they think that works good for the video. And then I have a width that is equal to what it is in my parent container. So <laughs> I'm going to open up Paint uh, because I'm just going to show you a little bit about how the math here is working. You kind of see it, I guess, I get a little bit down here, but I'm kind of going to explain it a little bit. And so if I'm kind of looking at my CSS sheet, my original width and height was 315, uh, or you know, 420 wide over 315 high. So that's 420 over <laughs> 420 over 315, and so 420 is the width, 315 is the height. Now I know what the value of the new width is going to be. That's my variable var for variable, uh, but I don't know what my new height needs to be. So I need to kind of figure that out. So in order to do that, uh, this is where math comes into play. So that'd be 420x is equal to 315 times my variable. And then if I solve for x, uh, that's going to be equal to 315 times my variable divided by 420. And so x will be the new height that I need to have in order to keep the, uh, the resolution, the uh, aspect ratio the same. So that's kind of my math equation. So back in my JavaScript file, I'm going to set, comment that out, set a variable for height, and that's going to be equal to uh, 315 times the width uh, divided by 420. And so that's going to be my new height. I'm going to set that to my YouTube container. In our height of H. So I'm going to kind of open this guy back up and I'm going to refresh it. The good news is, is that it is set, uh, you kind of see it in the style tag, it's kind of setting it on the fly down here, 561. So it's kind of setting it on the fly, if I kind of bring it all the way back down to the bottom, hit refresh, now my video has got the same aspect ratio, it's within my container, it's kind of doing what I need it to do, so that's, I think that's pretty neat. The downside though is that uh, if I kind of resize the window like I just did, then the video kind of stays the same size, the height doesn't change because currently all of this is doing is saying when the page gets loaded, this gets executed. So down here in my already done solution, um, kind of what I did in order to make that happen is I started uh, to find a function called set YouTube and basically just kind of moved uh, these statements inside of it like that. And then when it gets loaded, I call set YouTube. Essentially it's going to do the same thing. Uh, it's going to work pretty well this time. If I size it back down, you kind of see that now the left and the right of the video is getting chopped off. If I kind of hit play, uh, yeah, it looks kind of weird. So, But if I hit refresh, then it'll be the proper size. So kind of what I want to do is I want to force uh, what's called the resize event. And every time the resize event gets called, which is every time I kind of move resize the browser, I kind of want this function to execute again. So that's where I kind of set, uh, look at the window object, and when it gets resized, I'm going to execute a function. And that function is going to be set YouTube. So now uh, it shouldn't really matter uh, that that guy is always going to kind of resize itself to the parent container as I keep kind of resizing it. So um, in the real world, you know, people can't really resize their phones. Uh, we can, we're kind of just demonstrating how we can resize with the browser. Um, but essentially this kind of makes an iframe be responsive and keep the aspect ratio. Uh, the other benefit of it is, is that if I really wanted to kind of limit the size of this guy, 
<coughs> I could just kind of create a parent container around it. So I could say you know, style width of 50%. And, you know, it's always going to kind of be uh, to the parent container, so it's always kind of maybe 50% of that parent container. And it's pretty neat. So it gives you kind of like a lot of options and, and exactly how you kind of want to do it and kind of can scale it up. Uh, and then you could kind of, you know, this could have uh, you know, use different style rules on it and it'll kind of cascade into what the YouTube is using. So anyway, hope you found this useful. Hope that kind of solved the question probably better than I did in class. Uh, I kind of wanted to sit down and code it out and actually show you the code code for it. Um, so it's really real simple CSS. Basically, I take the height and width off that YouTube has given us, set the width to 100%, and then I'm kind of using a little bit of math here to kind of figure out what my new height needs to be in order to keep the same aspect ratio that uh, YouTube gave us in the first place. So, I don't know. I hope that, uh, hope you enjoyed it. Have a good one. Bye.